tell them it wasn't easy. When they look back and see 125 wins, tell them we never took a single one for granted. Teach them about our passion and our patience. If they ask who was our star, give them 25 names. And if you forget our names, just tell them we were Yankees. And in the season of our lives, we became a team. A team that made people believe that baseball could be magic. And men could be perfect. Swung on, he's gonna get it! Popped up to right field! O'Neal near the line! He makes the catch! David Wells has pissed a perfect game! Bernie Williams coming, still coming! He lunges and he makes a great catch! The deep center, that ball is high, it is far, it is gone! He hit a grand slam home run! Swing on, there it goes! Deep right, a 3-1 home run! And the Yankees take a 7-5 lead! And slowly to third, charging is, Roche's bare hand, fires, got him! Oh, what a play! Long drive, way back! At the wall, God! History of Yankee Stadium on the season's last day! In nearly a century of Yankee baseball, there had never been a year like 1998. But their greatest challenge still lay ahead. And the World Series crown they treasured was still 11 wins away. On the strength of their record-setting regular season, the Yankees would open the postseason as the hunted. Their hunters would be the slugging Texas Rangers. The other American League series pitted the confident Boston Red Sox against the defending American League champions, the resilient Cleveland Indians. In the National League, the Atlanta Braves had won 106 games, but they would have to contend with the remarkable Sammy Sosa and his Chicago Cubs, while the feared Houston Astros would meet the overlooked San Diego Padres. The hunt had begun. Well set. The runners go. The 3-2. Swung out a miss. He struck him out on a high-breaking pitch. Brown, the kick, the pitch on the way. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Strikeout number 16 for Kevin Brown. Three balls, two strikes. Runners go. A deep right. On its way. Grand slam for Fresco. Ball to right field. Back it goes. Back, 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 back. Come on. Ball run number two of the game for Ball. The set, the pitch. And a swing and a long drive. Away back. Let's 
think he got enough? See ya! Home run, Shane Spencer! The dream continues! Oh, how do you explain Shane Spencer? And really, who wants to? Line to left, that'll be sinking a base hit. Justice up with it, trying to score Valentin. Out of the play, in two! And the Cleveland Indians are headed to New York! While the San Diego Padres, Atlanta Braves, and Cleveland Indians were joyously savoring their division series victories, for the New York Yankees, the celebration had turned bittersweet. We just wanted to send a message to Darrell that we're all behind him, uh, him and his family, and uh, we're pulling for him. We know he's strong enough to get through this, and uh, we're behind you. During their series against Texas, the Yankees learned that Darrell Strawberry, one of their emotional leaders, had been diagnosed with cancer. Being a part of this Yankee ball club, being able to you know, be on a team with such great success that we've had this season, and then you reach this point where you get to the playoffs, um, you're not able to be a part of it because of an of, of illness. And that, um, like I said, I really have no control over, and all I can do is um, you know, try to be strong and do the best that I can. As Darrell's wife, Cherise, threw out the ceremonial first pitch, the Yankees would begin the American League Championship Series with heavy hearts, but also vengeful ones. The Cleveland Indians had eliminated them from the 1997 playoffs, and their Game 1 starting pitcher, Jarrett Wright, had claimed two of Cleveland's three victories. The Yankees were eager to right a wrong that had been simmering within them all year. Here's Knobloch. A line drive toward right center field that falls for a hit. Not going. Line drive by the scale for a base hit. There go the runners. Pitch is swung on and line. is a base hit right field. Knobloch scores. On to third goes Jeter. And the Yankees take a 1-0 lead. Right at the belt. Deal. Swung on. Third base hit. Center field. Jeter scores. And the Yankees take a 2-0 lead. Posada comes through, and it's 4 nothing. The Yankees' 5 nothing first inning lead was in good hands with lefty ace David Wells. Hit toward the hole, Jeter backhands from the outfield grass, got him! Man, what a play! What a throw from the outfield grass. Wells waits for Jeter to bang fist. My hat goes off to, to Derek. He made one of the best plays I've seen in that situation. You know, for that to happen, it just it's very emotional at times when you're out there. When you see those kind of plays, it gets you so pumped up. You don't know what to do, man. You're just ready to go. And with 20-game winner David Cohn on the mound in the second game, the Yankees were expected to go to Cleveland with a two-game lead. But a David Justice home run seemed to shatter New York's aura of invincibility. And the Yankees are behind for the first time in this postseason. New York would get a run of their own, but no more. And as the game moved to extra innings, the Yankees would squander several scoring opportunities. And then, in the 11th inning, they would squander the game. Ryman squares to Bunn and gets it down nicely. Martinez with the flip to first, safe. Now the Yankees are going to contend as the ball rolls away, and Wilson's being waved home. He stumbles. They may have a play on him. He slides in safely. The Yankees are going to contend that Fryman was in the baseline. But that was a very poor play to let that ball roll down there while you wait for an umpire to make a decision. You can't let the ball roll 10 feet down the right field line and no one go pick it up. In one bizarre play, the Indians had taken the second game and the momentum. When they came home to Cleveland, they would take control of the series. This ball is well into right center field. On the run is Bernie Williams. He's a spectator, though. This one's gone. Here's the pitch to Tome. The pitch is swung on. Drill deep to right field. O'Neal back on the track at the wall. See ya. 
and the Indians now lead five to one. And the Yankees are in trouble here in game three. As the Yankees helplessly watched a barrage of Indian home runs vanish into the Cleveland night, it was clear that a season that was destined for greatness was suddenly in peril. The Yankees have never had serious pressure put on them all year. It might be about to happen here tonight. Joe, your team has not been behind since April 21st. How do you think that they'll react? Well, we've bounced back many times before. Uh, so I guess now that we're down two games to one, we're not the favorites anymore. We'll see what happens. While the Yankees were feeling the heat in the ALCS, the Atlanta Braves already had their feet to the fire. Facing the San Diego Padres in the NLCS, the Braves were in an autumn swoon, headed for an early fall. Hey, he's gonna throw it, you're gonna stand there, he's gonna throw a fastball right there. You're just gonna hit it right back at him somewhere. Hard, real swing. Caminetti waiting for the drive. Center field, pretty well hit. Way back, way back, through the wall, out the wall. That ball is out of here! Oh, Ducker! Padres take a 3-2 lead here in the 10th. Ken Caminiti's game-winning homer in the opener would set the tone for the series. The Padres surged with confidence, and the Braves came unnerved. Backhand, pass the out of Lockhart. That's going to score a run. Charging Jones. Here comes the throw. Here comes Gomez. Head first slide. He scores. And I can give you an old doctor for that one. Two ball, two strike pitch coming up. Let's go waiting and strike three called on the ball game is over. An 11 strikeout night for Kevin Brown and the Padres have just swept the first two games of this LCS here in Atlanta. Here's the pitch coming up. Drive left field, another base hit. Racing around his wife, up with his man to wall, throw to the plate. And they got him and what a play! Man, you can hang a star in that baby! Atlanta Braves thought they would roll right through the Padres and get to the World Series for the fifth time in the 90s. They have hit a wall here in San Diego with this Padres team. After stunning the Braves in the first three games, the Padres looked to knock them out in front of their boisterous fans. But they would drop the fourth game, and clinging to a narrow lead late in the fifth game, they would call on their number one starter, Kevin Brown to come in from the bullpen to finish off the Braves. Driven into deep right field, at the track, at the wall, a three-run home run, Michael Tucker, and the Atlanta Braves take a 5-4-8th inning lead. Michael Tucker's dramatic home run brought the series back to Atlanta. The Padres had lost with their best, and with the pressure on them mounting, they looked to Sterling Hitchcock to bail them out in Game 6. Hitchcock was up to the challenge. In his two previous postseason starts, he had beaten former Cy Young Award winners Randy Johnson and Greg Maddox. Now he would take on a third, Tom Glavin. Three-two pitch, got him, looking to end the inning. Ball and two strikes, Joyner strikes out, two gone. Like gunfighters, Hitchcock and Glavin dueled for five scoreless innings. Then in the sixth, Glavin blinked. Glavin's 3-2 pitch, runner going, slow ground ball, slowly charging Chipper Jones, bare hand grab, great throw, but the run scores. Coming on to score is Greg Bond. The Padres have broken out of a scoreless tie. The 1-2 pitch on the way, ground ball up the middle, has got a chance, it's a base hit. Here comes Cammy. they'll never get him. It is 2-0 San Diego. San Diego's five-run rally would finish off Atlanta. Left field, that's got a chance, that's got a chance, and coming on, coming on, off the glove of Batista. The Padres have broken them open here in game six in Atlanta. A five-nothing shutout win put the Padres back in the fall classic for the first time since 1984. And the Padres draped the National League flag around their shoulders for 1998. The whole doctor. 
If the San Diego Padres' journey to the World Series was a joyride, then the Yankees' trip was an odyssey, burdened by their own expectations. The Yankees began Game 4 against Cleveland, trailing 2-1 in the series. But all season long, they had manufactured a hero whenever they needed one. For the biggest game of the year, manager Joe Torre handed the ball to rookie pitcher Orlando Hernandez, known as El Duque. The charismatic Cuban refugee who came to the Yankees shrouded in mystery. El Duque had escaped Cuba by raft ten months earlier. Now, he would try to help keep the Yankees season afloat in Cleveland. Up steps O'Neill with two down and the base is empty. Swung on and hit high in the air to right. That ball is high. It is far. It is gone. Paul O'Neill homers and the Yankees in the first inning take a one nothing lead. Paul O'Neill staked him to the slimmest of leads. Now it was time for El Duque to make it stand up. With two outs and the slugger Jim Tomei up, he was in a first inning jam. So Vizquel from second and Ramirez from first will be running on the pitch. Here it comes. And a long drive to right. O'Neill back to the wall with just enough room. The Indians narrowly missed getting to El Duque. And that was as close as they would come. Swung and missed, he struck him out. With every batter he retired, El Duque breathed new life into his teammates. In the first must game they've had all year, the Yankees came through swimmingly, mostly because of El Duque Orlando Hernandez. Uplifted by El Duque and spurred on by the free-spirited David Wells in Game 5, the Yankees returned to championship form. Pitch. Swung on it high in the air to deep right. Ramirez back on the track, out the wall. That ball is gone! The pitch is grounded up the middle. Knobloch feeds G to one on the first double play. Oh, what a big play by the Yankees! By defeating the Indians 5-3, the Yankees were coming home to claim the pennant. A big game in Yankee Stadium, sellout crowd, chance to go to the World Series. I just hope we see the horses at the end of the game, circling the field. Swung on and hit high in the air to center. It is high, it is far, it is gone! A three-run home run! And the pitch to Jeter. Swung on and driven out toward right center field deep. Going back Ramirez, still back, at the track, and it's up against the wall. It falls untouched. One run scores. Here's Girardi. He'll score. Hit on the ground to third. Backhanded by Brocious to his feet. Oh, what a play by Brocious. Is dribbled on the ground back to Rivera. He feels, goes to first, in time. Ball game over. American League Championship Series over. Yankees win. The Yankees win. The New York Yankees take another step to their eventual goal as they defeat the Cleveland Indians four games to two. The spirits that haunt baseball's most hallowed ground seem to come alive in October. Yankee Stadium first-timers like the Padres' Tony Gwynn can be daunted by the ghosts of Ruth, Garrig, and Mantle if they're not already in awe of the present-day Yankees themselves. I just want to say congratulations. What, what y'all have done this year, it's it just been tremendous year. To win that many games. I just, I, it's hard to believe that one team could do what, what y'all did. Now, you getting fat all the night. <laughs> We can't get much uglier, but we get fatter That's all exactly it. right. Joe, how you doing? Congratulations. Congratulations, Congratulations you guys. Thank you. Wally, how you doing, Wally? Bien. Okay. You too? Bien, bien, bien. bien. Gracias a Dios. How the how? Enjoy yourself, man. We both feel okay. okay. We're here. <laughs> That's just got here. That's the toughest part. You got to us tough time. I got news for you, man. Yeah. You're sweating every game, every sport. It's playoffs. It's unbelievable. When you get here, it's almost like a release. 
After the great baseball renaissance of 1998, the stakes at the Fall Classic seemed higher than ever. And if the Padres were going to get the jump on the Yankees, they would have to go through the toughest big game pitcher in the American League. Ferris is running as Gwynn pokes a base hit into left field. Ferris will stop as Lede came up ready to throw. A walk is single and the Padres have something working in the first. Look at Tony Gwynn. He just serves one through the shortstop position. That was vacated by Derek Jeter. How many times had National League pitchers seen that? After getting Greg Vaughn to hit into a double play, Wells needed one out to escape from the top of the first. Next, it'll be a 1-2, and the pitch. He struck him out swinging. So Wells works in and out of trouble. Wells dodged a bullet early. The Padres' Kevin Brown wasn't so lucky. Next pitch on the way, Davis hits Brown. Harrams off his knee, he'll get a base hit on that one. That was a shot up the middle, I don't know where it got Brown. And Brown tells the trainer, <laughs> God has to get out of here, I'm fine. Four batters later, the situation cried out for Darryl Strawberry. Instead, the moment belonged to the man who replaced Darryl on the roster. Ricky Lede, of all people, getting the start here in game one of the 1998 World Series for a team that won 114 games. Before the game, around the batting cage, he thanked me for putting him in the lineup. I said, don't thank me. I said, you're the one that has the ability. You're on this roster and go out there and do the best you can, have some fun. Uh, you know, our left field situation, we weren't getting a lot of uh, offense since Spencer stopped hitting home runs. So I put him out there. I mean, that's how smart I am. I, I put one of the hitting stars of the game in left field and batted him ninth. The 3 2. Swung on and lined down the right field line. It is a base hit. One hop off the wall. Davis scores. Martinez scores. Posada is held at third. It's a double down the right field line. And two RBIs for rookie Ricky Lede. And the Yankees take a 2 0 lead. In the top of the third, Wells faced the Padres' 50 home run hitter, Greg Vaughn, with two outs and one on. Wells holds the set. And now the 0-2. Swung on, hit in the air to deep right center field. That ball is high. It is far. It is gone. A two-run home run to deep right center field by Vaughn. And the ball game is tied at two. If the Padres had spotted something about Wells they could handle, they knew Gwynn wouldn't miss it. He's going to go up top. Sent to Tony, fastball high, deep right field, throw the right field, foul ball, and that's fair, it's gone, and it is going and gone. Home run, Anthony Keith Gwynn, 4-2 Padres. I challenge me, flat out. I, I'm not going to try to trick you. You know, I'll basically tell you what's coming. You know, you have to tip your cap when they hit the pitch that you throw. You know, I don't want them back. You know, I just wish they wouldn't hit them that far. <laughs> Wells deals. Vaughn swings. There it goes to deep left. It is high. It is far. It is gone. A home run for Vaughn. And San Diego now takes a commanding 5-2 lead. The three-run deficit was the biggest hole the Yankees had been in all season with David Wells on the mound. And despite the bruised chin and a reported case of the flu, Padres ace Kevin Brown was in all his intimidating glory. Brown with a one-two pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Goodness gracious. By the sixth inning, the Padres themselves had become the scariest thing in the Bronx on this October night. Having already defeated 200 win teams in the playoffs, they had the look of the executioner, ready for victim number three. had 50 come from behind wins that's the most in the American League but they better hurry up in the bottom of the seventh the Yankees came back to life 1-0 swung on line drive base hit over the leaping try of Barris into right field and Posada is on with a one-out single the youngsters at the bottom of the order led the way a single by Jorge Posada and a one-out walk to Lede brought Kevin Brown's night to a sudden end. And outside, ball four. 
Dave Stewart, paging Dave Stewart. Here comes, ooh, not Dave Stewart. Replacing the Padres' ace with suspect middle relief was like giving the Yankees a second chance to win game one. And a second chance was just what the Yankees' Chuck Knobloch was looking for. What an opportunity for Chuck Knobloch to endear himself to these Yankee fans. Redemption! Redemption, Chucky! Redemption! And the two out. Swung on and drilled deep to left. Did he get enough? Going back at the wall. He leaps. See ya. Home run, Chuck Knobloch. And the Yankees have tied the game in five. Oh, all is forgiven by the New York fans as Knobloch goes deep. A huge three-run home run. And the stadium's up for grabs. Derek Jeter followed with a hit, and the Yankees loaded the bases for their struggling slugger, Tino Martinez. And now Tino Martinez, another Yankee player who has a chance to erase a lot of bad memories in the postseason. This could be another cleansing at bat. It was for Knobloch earlier in the inning. Langston leads in, goes from the stretch, sets. And the 3 2. Swung on a drill deep to right. There it goes. That ball is gone. A grand slam into the upper deck for Tito Martinez. And the Yankees lead 9 5. Seven runs in the seventh inning in the first game of the best of seven World Series. Oh, what a home run for Tito Martinez. We've had some tough times and we've been trying to pump each other up, you know, the past few weeks trying to be encouraging and supportive to each other. So it was really special that, uh, you know, we could both come through in one inning like that. Tino, you knew something good was going to happen. I mean, he was just so due and he wanted it so bad. And it was almost like we were getting on the step already because we knew he was going to do something. What a storied seventh inning. A three-run home run for Knobloch. A grand slam for Tino. That's, I mean, if we don't go back, that's the way I'll remember Yankee Stadium, watching that, that Grand Slam go out of there and just watching the people go crazy. But that's what I'll remember about uh, the 1998 World Series. After the tension of the series opener, individual redemption had lifted the pressure off the team for game two. And on the mound, with the calm of a man whose dreams had already come true, stood El Duque, who had left any sense of fear a world away. I'm not afraid of anything they can do against me. That's the only thing they can do. They can hit it or not hit it. Two on, two out. It'll be a 1-0 to Joyner. And the pitch is swung on, hit in the air to deep right. O'Neal back on the track on the wall, leaps, and he makes a catch. Oh, what a catch by O'Neal. If he doesn't make that play, then momentum's on our side. But, I mean, he made it look easy. Or I was on second base at the time, so I didn't see it until I saw the replay. But you watch him on a replay, he knew exactly where he was. He knew exactly what he had to do, and he went up and he caught the ball. Great, great play by Paul O'Neill. Banged into the walls, he caught it and pulled it down. A sparkling play to rob the Padres of at least one run, maybe more. So when he came back and, you know, he's against the wall and he made the catch and he comes down with the ball, you know, it's just like, yes, you, you know, you feel yourself kind of pumping your fists a little bit, saying, okay, now we're in the dugout and we have our chance to uh, get on the board first. I could tell when I got back in the, in the dugout that Duque came up to me and I don't really know what he said, but, you know, he was happy. In the bottom of the first, Padres catcher Greg Myers, starting behind the plate for the first time in a month, tried to shake off the rust. The Yankees smelled blood, and after Chuck Knobloch worked a leadoff walk, New York went right for the jugular. Let's put in person this guy behind the play, okay? So anytime, if you get a good lead, just take off. Let's put him in person early in the game, okay? There goes Knobloch, pitch cut on a miss, and Myers' throw is a terrible throw, and Knobloch steals. The Yankees were the aggressors, and the Padres were back on their heels. Ground ball to third, backhanded by Caminiti, long toss across the diamond, high, over the head of Joyner. Rounding third is Knobloch, he will score, and the Yankees take a 1-0 lead. And the 1-0, swung on and grounded up the middle, and through to center field, a base hit. 
swung on and ripped. It is a base hit. Two miscues have given rise to a two-out rally. If we can get an extra out somehow, whether it's an error or you know something else happened out there, catch a break, we've been able to be able to take advantage of those and, and put some runs on the board when that happens. Base hit between third and short in the left field. Davis scores, holding at second is Tino. It's a base hit. And an RBI for Brocious, and the Yankees take a 3 nothing lead. In the next inning, Ricky Lede ignited another barrage of Yankee base hits. Lede, another hit through the right side, and that's how we start the bottom of the second. I'll say one thing about the Yankees, they have found holes wherever they have hit the ball. The pitch bounced up the middle and fielded. No, it goes past Ferris to center field, base hit. It's a ribby single for Jeter, and the Yankees take a 4 nothing lead. And Andy Ashby has thrown a lot of pitches through less than two innings. And drilled the deep right center field. It is high, it is far, it is gone! Burn, baby burn! And the Yankees have taken a 6 nothing lead. Ernie Williams' first home run of the postseason had the Yankees in command, and Tino Martinez opened the third with his third straight hit. It'll be a 1-2. Hit on the ground in the middle. Here's another base hit for the Yankees to center field. Yankees are wearing Ashby out. Most of them ground singles. Then it was the Yankees' number nine hitter with his fourth hit in five World Series trips. Today on his way to second base. It is now 7-0 New York. And Ricky Lede, they can't get him out. Every Yankee starter would get a hit and either score or drive in a run as the Yankees' offensive balance tipped the scales of the series in New York's favor. Right then we, we had gotten into the bullpen early in the game. You know, when you're starting pitchers uh, mowing them down and you continually to tack on runs, game's over. Had a good fastball that day, uh, good changeup, and I mean kept the hitters off balance. But uh, after the, we got some runs after, and you know he he kind of relaxed a little bit and enjoyed the moment even more. After Joyner's deep drive in the first, El Duque wouldn't let another runner reach scoring position until the Yankees had a seven nothing lead. Technically, he was a major league rookie, but in the World Series, El Duque was clearly a world class master. Well, is that a slow arm? By a slow arm, uh, it's a compliment, really. It's a guy who, it looks like his arm is coming through at about 50 miles an hour and the ball's jumping out at 90. And they're very deceptive, guys with slow arms like that. There's no effort into it and he just snaps it right at the end. He's gonna bust him right here. Not much of a swing from Vaughn, he was fooled. He was ahead of the hitters, that was, a, you know, the main, the main thing. And, you know, he had a good change up that day too, and uh, he came in on lefties, went away on, you know, on lefties too, came in on righties, dropped down on righties. I mean, it was a lot of fun to catch him because he, uh, he was on. El Duque's catcher got into the fun at bat as well, with one man on in the fifth. Swung on and drilled deep to right center. That could go. See ya. Home run, Jorge Osana. I got out there and said, I'm going to try to hit the ball hard. And, you know, I got it up in the air and the ball went out. He has so much power. What a shot. A two-run Posada home run. When I'm sitting on the bench, that's the most, you know, I was thinking, I'll say, I hit a home run. over serious. Jeff Nelson came on to close out the 9-3 victory. Snag three is called inside corner. Ball game over. Yankees win. The Yankees win. For El Duque, who had risked his very life for the opportunity to pitch in a game like this, it was the sweetest win of all. I was very happy that our team had won the first two games of the World Series. It's two steps less than we have to take. I showed Jose the ball, and he said he was going to throw it into the stands. I told him if he did, then I would throw him into the stands.
in San Diego, the record crowds were back. Would the Padres find their winning ways waiting for them too? On their feet, waving their towels. Oh boy, what a sight. Win or lose, this has been one of the great experiences in the history of San Diego sports. NLCS MVP Sterling Hitchcock benefited early from all the support surrounding the field and on it. Coming on. Coming in, Finley, Finley. Oh, got it, got it. He got it. Oh, Doctor, you can hang a star that one. He juggled the ball twice and held on. Woo-hoo. Off to a great start. Steve Finley kept Hitchcock out of trouble in both the first and second innings. Drive center field, Finley going back, 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 way back, way back, near the wall, that's the wall. He got it! Oh, you can hang another star on that, baby! But they were two huge plays early in the game where you know, momentum was still out there to be had, and uh, if he doesn't make those plays, maybe the Yankees get it. Hitchcock gained confidence, striking out five in the first five innings. But New York had solid defense and pitching of its own. And the three-two, breaking ball, struck him out swinging. The fourth straight former Cy Young winner to face Hitchcock in the postseason was David Cohn. And through five hitless innings, he and Hitchcock dueled to a standoff. Strike three is called Gomez left before the signal by Dale Scott. He got him swinging in the third and looking here in the fifth. In the top of the sixth, Cohn looked to engineer the game's first breakthrough himself. Swung on and blooped to left field. That's going to fall in for a base hit. How about that? Right in front of Vaughn, who plays it on a hop, and he fires it into Gomez. You know, David Cohn uh, knows what he's doing, and he is an athlete, but I don't think the Yankees are happy about him running the bases. It doesn't help Cohn's pitching performance. He may have to run and slide, especially if Knobloch is bunting. He does bunt down the third baseline. A beauty, barehanded by Caminiti. High throw, and it pulls Joyner off the bag. Everybody is safe, and Sterles, you were right. The 0-1. Swung on, ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Rounding third is Cone. Do they send him? No, Willie Randolph holds him. And the throw from Finley comes all the way in, a slightly up the third baseline. I thought I was running pretty good, and then I saw the highlight, and that was ugly. I am slow. I was running like a duck. Which pitcher would run out of gas first? So base is loaded, one out. And here is the first great chance for the Yankees. Here is Bernie Williams up. The 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Stuck three. Just when it looked like Hitchcock might wilt, he turned the energy up and turned the Yankees away again. Yeah, give him credit. He's pitching with a lot of heart right now. He's giving it everything he's got. Base is loaded, two out, no score, top of the sixth. In game three, the 0-1 pitch. Hucked him up. Now you'll hear it, because Kilbeal's waiting. And calling. And catching. What a job by Sterling Hitchcock. The MVP of the National League Championship Series is coming up big again in the World Series. The Yankees leave the bases loaded in the sixth inning. Sterling Hitchcock, we salute you. He has been simply amazing. In the bottom of the sixth, Hitchcock pulled out yet another surprise. Line shot right center field. How about that? Makes it. Earlier for David Cohn. Now for Hitchcock. Okay, I've seen it all. Going right to the mound from, from third base, you know, it was a little deflating, and I tried to get myself back up, and I kind of took the pitcher for granted leading off the inning. I thought that might be an easy out, and I can take a break here, and uh, next thing you know, uh, first and second, nobody out. With two men on, Cohn faced Tony Gwynn with 65,000 voices ready to raise the roof. Cohn delivering. Brown, no, that's the bag for Martinez. That's a base hit. They're going to bring home Sterling Hitchcock. The throw is going and way up the line. one nothing Padres. The ball got away. It goes in the dugout, and here comes Gilbeal. He will score. 2 nothing Padres. 
Padre, and they'll send Tony Gwynn to third. How about that? Oh, they're going crazy. I think the thing that really kind of set the table for all of this is that in the sixth, Coney let off with a base hit, and so he's on the bases. Even though we wiggled out of the inning without giving up a run, hit starts off the bottom of the sixth with a base hit, and then he has to run the bases. Just like in the opener, the Padres had a three-run lead after six. And once again, they would send a weary starter out to pitch the seventh. I don't know if running the bases or you know just being out there was a factor, but you know, I know Broch has had a heck of an at-bat coming into the top of the seventh. And the 3-2. Swung on a drill deep to left field. Going back is Vaughn. Still back. On the track. At the wall. Looking up. See ya. A home run for Scott Broch, who is having a blistering World Series. And the Yankees have closed to within 3-1. Oh, did he hit that ball. Having given up three runs in the, in the sixth inning, uh, I thought that was a huge momentum swing in the game, and then Scotty comes up, bang, it's three to one. And all of a sudden on the bench, we kind of rose up and said, hey, we can get back in this thing. Swung on a line deep to left center field, giving Chase Finley on the run, he will not get there. One hop up against the wall. Spencer Pottering in the second, and he's got himself a double. For the fourth straight game, Hitchcock had outdueled a Cy Young winner and the Padres' relief had made his lead hold up in each of the previous three. Swung on and ground it softly to third base. That'll score a run. Under the glove of Caminiti, and then bobbled by Gomez. Everybody is safe, and the Yankees have cut it to 3-2. With one out and the tying run at second, Derek Jeter stepped to the plate. Georgia comes set, breaking ball, line shot. Gomez, the bobble, and then hands on. Goes to second base. Oh my goodness. What a play. It was a great escape. But there was a sense that the Padres had let the momentum slip through their fingers. Left fielder Shane Spencer and the Yankees grabbed it by the throat. He's out! All season long, the Yankees had played as if the opportunity to win every ball game would come if they just waited long enough. After Paul O'Neill led off the eighth with a walk, they sensed the moment coming. So it looks like we're going to see the, the great closer, the best closer in the National League, Trevor Hoffman, here in the eighth. Actually, it was kind of neat to see him come in the game with with the ACDC going and the fans. I mean, I, I was on first base at the time, and I was like, you know, this is kind of cool. <laughs> well, we're staring at them getting back in the series 2-1. to one. They've got Kevin Brown going again. Uh, we hadn't seen Hoffman before. It's such a great year he's had, so much said and written about him. We were anxious to see him, but we were kind of leery, too, because he's, he's got great numbers, great stuff, and uh, we didn't really know what to expect. Bernie Williams, the league's leading hitter at the plate. Fans go bananas here. Drive right field, high in the air. Gwen going back. That's got some distance. Taking him right to the wall, in front of the wall, and he's got it for the out. Woo! With a loud out and a walk, Trevor Hoffman danced around the heart of the order. But heart was something the Yankees had, one through nine. Scott Brocious worked Hoffman deep into the count, waiting for his pitch, waiting for his moment. At second base, Paul O'Neill, the time run. At first base, Tino Martinez, the go-ahead run. Two balls, two strikes, one away. Tenth forward of the ball game. Swung on and hit in the air to deep center. Finley back, away back, on the track, at the wall. Gone! A three-run home run for Scott Brocious. Scott Brocious might well be the MVP of the World Series. He hit a three-run home run over the dead center field wall. And the Yankees take a 5-3 lead. Scott Brocious has been unbelievable. It really struck me when I saw the emotion on his face. I mean, how could you not be pumped in the World Series in this type of situation? But that's one of the great performances in, in World Series history, and Yankee World Series history. Mariano Rivera made sure it was the last great moment of the night by getting the final five outs. It'll be a one-two pitch. Juggernaut swinging. Ball game over. Yankees 
Game 3 took its rightful place among the greatest wins of baseball's greatest franchise. For the Padres, it was getting hard not to get caught up in the sweep of history. Mark McGuire's presence added to the emotion surrounding Game 4, a bittersweet mix of wonderful memories of 1998 and the melancholy sense that baseball's greatest season could be coming to an end. Yeah, I want to win like everybody else, but sometimes, like right now, I got to sit here and say, hey, that's a hell of a club over there we're playing. But by no means am I writing us off, because I'm not. I just refuse to put the crown on their head until they win four games. While the Padres' belief in themselves would be tested, so too would the faith of Yankee pitcher Andy Pettit. The stalwart of their world championship staff in 1996 had struggled in 1998 coping with worries about his ailing father back home. I know his father gave him a lot of encouragement to go out there and pitch, and Yandy's got a lot of guts. The team has a lot of confidence in him. Back in 96, he had led the Yankees to a pressure-packed shutout victory in the World Series. The pressure was on again, and so was Andy Pettit. Got him again. Tried to check his swing, fell down, jammed him inside, and struck him out. He's good. He's not throwing strikes. Everything is down, 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 down. He's always going to throw. Down and away. And Pettit got more than emotional support from his teammates. Jeter feels off balance throw and a hop in time. What a play invented by Derek Jeter. Give Jeter and the Yankees credit. They can play this game. He was headed toward right center. He twisted his body and threw on a hop. And it skipped into Tino's glove. The play of the game for Derek Jeter. Some guys just seem to have the magic. But even a home run king would have been glad to sit this one out the way Pettit was mowing down the Padres. Pressure cooker in the World Series and Pettit is pitching brilliantly. I know there's a guy in a hospital in Houston who's pretty happy. Meanwhile, the Padres had their ace Kevin Brown on the hill. And Brown was looking more like the pitcher who struck out 16 Astros in the playoffs than the one who couldn't get out of the seventh in game one against the Yankees. The 3-2 is on the way. Swing and a miss, strike three. Ain't he something? After five scoreless innings, the Yankees looked for a break in the sixth. The 1 1. Swung on and chopped high to shortstop. Charging Gomez on the short hop field. Fires. Not in time. Pitch to O'Neill and swung on a line down the right field line. That's a base hit. It's going to go to the wall. Playing the carom is Tony Gwynn. Hustling the third is Derek Jeter to hold him right there. Once again, here come the Yankees, which means more and more pitches, more and more threats against Kevin Brown. Bernie Williams will get his chance here to put the Yankees out in front here in the sixth inning. Back to Brown, and eternity as he waits for it, throws to first for the out. The run scores, and the Yankees take a one to nothing lead. On a ball that traveled less than 60 feet, the Yankees moved themselves into a position to win, and the game remained a matter of inches. Dino Martinez has to wait for the second. One to nothing, New York, here in the sixth inning. With a shortstop, Jeter gets the high hop. The Derek Jeter had boldly gone for the lead runner to keep the double play in order. A little decision that would make a big difference in the game. Here's Ken Caminiti. He is 0-4-2. 
And the pitch. Swung on and grounded to second base. Could be two. Now block fields. Goes to second one. Back to first double play. And the Yankees turn it and head it. Gets out of the inning. Three outs on two pitches ended the seventh. In the eighth, the Yankees inched along towards a championship. Here's a 3-1 pitch. There goes Gina. Pitch on the way. Chop to high. Chop to the first base with Lehrer. Over to get it. And Lehrer tries for it and safe. Absolute long decision in the heat of battle. Swung on and lined, base hit, left field. Scoring is Jeter, running third on Edo, they hold him up. It's a base hit. And the Padres are really in deep trouble right now. The infield was in for a play at the plate. Rochus made contact and hit a soft minor over Goldman's hand. It's a base hit and an RBI for Brocious. And the Yankees take a 2-0 lead. Ricky Lede finally got the ball out of the infield for the Yankees with a sacrifice fly that made the score 3-0. Brown's night again ended bitterly. But the Padres would fight to the bitter end. Getting closer and closer to their 24th World Championship. The amazing Tony Gwynn started the eighth with a single, lifting his series average to 500. Jeff Nelson came in to face the 50 home run bat of Greg Vaughn. Pettit had given his team his best. The bullpen would make sure it was good enough. Next came Mariano Rivera, who took the lowest ERA in Major League postseason history into the ninth. Yankees playing back, hoping to get the ground ball. Rivera deals, hit on the ground, double play ball to Jeter. Feed now block one, on to first double play. Finally, it was a first year Yankee, putting the flourish on a series that put him in the pantheon of Yankee heroes of the fall. Hit on the ground on a hop to Brocious. Fields, rolls across, end time, ball game over, World Series over, Yankees win. The Yankees win! In a lifetime, we will probably never see this again. 125 wins, unheard of. They are an amazing baseball team. And if you are a New York Yankee fan, you should have a very broad smile on your face right now because it doesn't get better than this. For the San Diego Padres, there was no dishonor in defeat. Only pride in how far they came and how many fans they brought with them. For the Yankees, there was the team of the century and the teammates of a lifetime. This team, as far as what it's accomplished, it's, it's, it's kind of mind-boggling. I mean, nobody can believe the things that we've done. I've never been on a team where I felt like deserved to be in a World Series and to win a World Series as much as this team did. It's neat. It's, it's neat to be part of it. And I think everybody in here should, should look around on that last night and remember, you know, this is a team that, that should be remembered for a long time. You just cherish the moments that you have with these guys because, you know, it's just one great, big, huge family that you never had. And now that you got it, you don't want to give it up.
Every team from now on that has a good season is going to be compared to this team, the 1998 Yankees. And I predict when the history of baseball is finally written, this will be the greatest team in the history of baseball.